Hi all, welcome to another Dave Downey fly tying video production where I'm going to produce flies, tie flies, give you tips and generally help you tie better flies and flies that catch fish as well. Uh, I've been away for a wee bit and getting back to it so this is a wee video that I'm going to do because I've been getting asked about this fly for a wee while. Uh, I have been doing a lot of fishing recently, mostly on Loch Leaven because the rivers have been so low. Uh, fish are on fry just now, so this is a little pattern that I want to tie for you. Uh, it's basically a Pele and Victor, so it's like a little fry bashing pattern. And I'm tying it on size 14s up to size 8s, and I have been using the 8s recently. So, for this video, and I hope you like it, you need to have some nice hooks. So, I'm using the Camasan 175s on a 10 just now. Uh, I like a 175, I like the Fully Mill hook. I like, if you're wanting a barbless, I like the Hanak and I also like the Fooling Mill as well. You know, there's lots of good hooks out there. It's really your own personal preference. So for the tail of the pattern, we're going to need some golden pheasant, right? Some beautiful feathers. So we're going to be using the golden pheasant. Uh, we're going to need some wire. Once again, I like using the Venryard stuff because it's thin. It doesn't tarnish that much uh, and it keeps its colour. For the body, it's a bit of a personal preference. So, what I'm going to use is I'm, I'm, I'll show you the thread first. The thread's a sheer 14.0 that I always use. You know, it just allows me to make slight mistakes, etc., etc. Uh, you can use Mirage, or we could use the Venryard tinsel. It's really up to yourself. Depending on the tinsel, depending on the the thread that you use, depends on the finish you get, because the thread kind of depends on the, 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 how opaque, how clear the tinsel is and what colour thread you use underneath depends on the way the fly ends up. We're going to need some hen pheasant centre tails, right? So I've got them, it's the very hard ones I'm using, so they're pretty good. I, I, I like them, they do the job. Uh, and we're going to need some blue jay, right? You can get away with using guinea fit dye guinea fill if you can't get blue jay but uh, if you can get blue jay it's much better and we need a nice red game cock hackle for the, the, the palmer so that, that's the, the, the materials that we need so let's get started so we'll just take the black thread touch and turns touch and turns so I hope these have all been good and you've been going out to fish and the season's actually uh, it's kind of disappeared on us you know it's uh, gone before it's really even got started, because there's not been a lot of water recently, especially for the rivers. So I've just caught that golden pheasant in. It's a wee bit long, so I'll pull it gently till I get it to where I want it. And I'm going to leave that on there, because I'm not wanting to cut that just now. I want to actually keep it nice and uh, even. So we'll get a bit of wire. I've got a bit here we can use. All right. And uh, we'll just gently bring that up and then we'll go forward. So if you look there, the wire's kind of level. We want it to be like that. So keep going forward and then we'll trim this off. Okay, that's it gone. Forward another little bit, then back. Ah, I said I've been using this on floating line, I've been on intermediate fast glass. I've been fishing it on the the, the, <laughs> the die seven between two humonguses and it's been catching me fish. So we'll just tie in the peril now. And it has been catching me quite a few fish, so uh, it is just a little fry pattern. It's a wet fly, but it is like a fry pattern. Right, and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a tiny wee dabber varnish on there. And that's just so uh, it it holds the tinsel on a wee bit better. So we'll now wrap the tinsel up, and you can see the difference, it's a really steely green. This is a Venryard uh, pearl I'm using. Whereas if I used the Mirage, because it's not so see-through, you would have a much brighter colour. I'm going to show you a fly that I did earlier, uh, with the Mirage, uh, and it, it will show you that it is a bit brighter. You can see the difference. So it really depends on the tinsel that you use. 
It's, everybody's got their own favourite, but you can see the difference there. One's done with Mirage, one's done without. So the next thing what we want to do is get our hackle, our red game hackle. You know, and these are fantastic hackles because they, they're really long and you can tie a lot of flies with them. So we're going to just catch that in. And we'll just keep going. And then one, two, three, four. Now I'll go back and I'll show you the other fly again that I tied before we start before I started the video. One, two, just work the wire in between. And I have got some news that'll be coming up quite soon that I think everybody will quite like. Uh, I'm not going to talk about it just now, but I do have something that I'm going to be that I'm working on at this moment in time, and I'm hoping that you can all join me when I start. Right, so trim that off, and once again, as always, I do a little bit of finish, because I don't want anything unravelling, and for the sake of a couple of tons of thread, that's fine. Right, so there we go again. Now what I'm going to do is turn the hook round. I could simply spin the vise, but I prefer to turn the hook, and I'm going to get my blue J. Right, so all I'm doing is I'll pull some of it off, catch it. As always, you're constantly working with your thumbs and your index finger. So I want it to be about just at the, the, the point of the hook. And using my thumbs again, like my, the way I do my booby, marabou, take it away. Then that tells me where I need to cut it. So I'm just going to bring it back in. Trying not to get myself caught on the barb hook. And just catch it in. Right. So don't be tempted to let go too early, you want to make sure you do at least four turns, three, four turns before you let go, then take it back out. That's it. Right, and then we're just going to do another little bit of finish before we put the wing on. Now the wing here, you can see I've already been cutting this one, right, and you can look. So that's the way you want to do it. So we're going to cut it in, turn it, and cut it in again, and you can see the two bits flapping about, so we just pull off one wing slip, put it on the table, pull the other one off, and set that on top, right, and then what you end up is that, okay, then, depending on the way you like the wing, you can have it just over the end of the tail, this is the important part, Hold it, keep the pressure on it, I'm actually squeezing quite hard. When you lift up here, what you're doing is you're catching the thread on your thumb, not your index finger. And then look, the thread's caught on my thumb, right, and I've got this loose part. So the loose part's when you bring it over, and then just pull down. Don't be tempted to let go of the wing until you've done five or six turns. Don't be tempted to look at it to see if it's straight or whatever. You've got to trust it. Just trust in the force. It's there. It's done. And then just trim that bit off. I really do hope you guys enjoy these videos because I really want to do a lot more. I want to try and get the subs up. Get more people watching. Pass on the information. Uh, so that's me tidied the head up. Now I'm just going to do a little bit finish. And as I say, I've got a new project in the pipeline that I think you'll all like. Hopefully you'll like it. Uh, but certainly just now, that's a Perle Invicta. And honestly, it's a great fly. It's been doing doing well on, on uh, Loch Leven for the wild brown trout. And I've been guiding a lot on Loch Leven. And to see, be quite honest, it's not an easy place to catch fish. But it's a satisfying place to catch fish. The fish are stunning. It's very good value for money compared to a lot of other places. And, and you know, you're generally made pretty welcome when you go there. And, and, you know, there's lots of information on the place. It's a historic water and it really is fishing quite well. Pity there's only two weeks of the season left. But I'll certainly be out another four or five times before the season finishes. So, just before we finish, 
I want to show you. You see the difference? So one's tied with Pearl, well, UTC Mirage, Opal, and one's tied with Enriards. So both very, very different. And it's whatever one you prefer. As long as the fish like it, that's all that matters to me. So I really hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you enjoyed the fly, and I hope you catch fish on it and you go and use it. You know, uh, give me some feedback. Let me know if you're catching fish on the flies I'm tying. Let me know if there's anything you want done. Uh, you can get people onto the channel if you want. See if they subscribe. If they don't, they might like the, the, the videos. They might not like the videos. I don't know. It's your choice. Uh, and basically, at the end of the day, if you need any materials or the flies, you can get them off the website. My shop's got all the stuff in stock anyway, and it's www.fly-fishingworld.com. If you need to get in contact with me, get it through Instagram, Dave at Fly Fishing World. Uh, sorry, not Dave at Fly Fishing World, it's Dave Downey Fly Fishing. Uh, if you want to get me on Facebook, it's David C. Downey. Hit me up there if you want to get me on a, my YouTube channel, it's just Dave Downey. But then again, if you're watching this video, you know about my YouTube channel. So, all I can say is, have fun, catch fish, and let me know. Have a good day, guys. Thank you. Bye.